Evening, everybody. God bless you tonight. Amen. Uh, what's the name of that storm that's that's brewing? Is it Storm Teddy or what is it? <laughs> what's it? Dudley. It sounded like you, Teddy. But it was a Dudley. I'm right. Okay. So uh, thank God it might be a storm outside, but it's calm here. Amen. And uh, it's just good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. And I just want to commend you for coming in to worship. Let's really worship Him tonight. Even the few of us that are here. I know uh, Patrick is going to be ministering the word. He always brings a great word. And I'm always, I'm always in, enthusiastic about sitting under the word myself and being ministered to. And I hope you feel the same. Have an open heart to the Lord. Will you stand with me? We're going to go to God in prayer. And uh, again, I, you know, I see, I say these things to you to remind myself a lot of the time. Because you might think ministers don't think this way. But sometimes you have to remind yourself why I'm here. Do you, you understand? Unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Hallelujah. I'm getting inside track here. Frank is going away on Friday. Let's really feel very sorry for Brother Frank. He's going for four weeks into the sun, into South Africa, on the lovely beaches, eating cheap, uh, uh, cheap but really nice quality fish. And uh, so, Frank, we love you, boy. And then Shane, I tell you, man, you always get into the coattails. Amen. Got kind of a wonderful time. Let's really ask the Lord, just as we gather t together in his name, that he would just speak a word to us. And as we worship him, that maybe he, as we minister to him tonight, his Holy Spirit will come and begin to minister to us. Whatever burdens you may be carrying, and uh, wherever you are tonight, just know that he's not far from you. And if you just sensitize your heart to him and open up your mouth and begin to praise him and give him the first fruit of your lips, sometimes it's, it's the greatest praise when you're in a difficult situation to lift up a holy hand and worship him. I think it's the greatest, sweet, the Bible is a great verse actually in, 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 in Ezekiel. It says, sweet are the songs in the night. So if anyone is in the night at the moment, sing to the Lord. 
because they're sweet to the Lord. Amen. Lord, we just praise you tonight, Lord, as we come into your presence, Lord, as we join together one another, Lord, to worship our Savior, our God, our King. And Lord, we want to tell you from the depths of our heart how much we love you. And Lord, we want to thank you for loving us, God. We want to thank you for opening our eyes, Lord God, for redeeming us from the pit, for crowning our heads with glory, Lord, and love and kindness, and filling us and satisfying us with good things, Lord. We just want to thank you, Lord, for bearing with us, God, Lord, with all our folly, yet you love us. And Lord, we want to say we love you back. We love you because you first loved us, Lord God. The way you found us, Lord, you didn't leave us that way, Lord. You you fixed us, Lord. You clothed us again. You put a new robe on us. You gave us a new name. Called us sons and daughters. You brought us, Lord, out of darkness, Lord God. And you set us at your table. And Lord, at the cost of that, Lord, took you your own life, Lord. A brutal, a brutal killing at the cross, Lord. And you did it for us. And we want to bless you. We want to lift up our voices together. We want to join with the angels. We want to join with the church all over the world. As men and women are gathering into different places to worship, even at this moment, millions of voices are being heard as they raise up the name of Jesus. And Lord, we add our voice to that tonight. And we say, holy and, and wonderful, Lord, and righteous and worthy of glory and honor, Lord, is our Savior. Hallelujah, Lord. We say you are worthy, Lord God. Lord, you're worthy regardless of how I feel, Lord God. You're worthy, Lord. You're just worthy of praise tonight, Lord. And so, Lord, receive the glory, Lord, from these broken vessels, from our broken hearts, from our broken lives, Lord, that we would say glory to the Lord, glory to Jesus. Lord, come and touch every heart tonight. Minister among every seat, Lord, every person, Lord God. Minister to your word, Lord God. Exalt your name, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Clap your hands, please, church. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Yes, I bring out you, Lord Jesus. You are worthy, Lamb who was slain. Hallelujah, Lord. We bless your name. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, oh, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Hallelujah. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Hallelujah. There's peace. There is peace. There is love. There is joy. for freedom it is for freedom he set us free it is for freedom he set us free I'm free I'm free <laughs> oh, I'm free I'm free Jesus, we exalt you. We are free. Can we sing it again? Where the spirit, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Hallelujah. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Woo! Church with a loud shout. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There's peace. There is peace. There is love. There is joy. It is for freedom. He set us free. It is for freedom. He set us free. It is for freedom. Hallelujah. It is for freedom He set us free I'm free No longer bound Hallelujah No chains holding me Free I'm free I'm free I'm free I'm free I'm free Hallelujah I'm free Just one last time please Church I'm free I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. 
God sets free. He's free indeed. Oh, yes, I'm free. Praise is rising. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring. Hope is stirring. Hearts are yearning for you. Hallelujah. We yearn for you. When we see you, because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, in your presence, all our fears are washed away. They're washed away. Oh, shout, Hosanna! 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 You are the God, Jesus. Oh, worthy of all, worthy of all our praise. Hosanna to Jesus, Hosanna! Hosanna! Come have your way. Welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Hear the sound, hear the sound of hearts returning to you. Return to you in your presence, in your kingdom, in your kingdom. Open hearts are made. Hallelujah, when we see him, because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, oh God, in your presence, oh, I wash, they wash the waves, they wash the waves, Hosanna, 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 you are the God, you are the God, oh, Jesus, worthy of all. Hosanna, 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 Jesus, come have your way among us, we welcome you here, Lord, Jesus. one last time, Hosanna, 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 oh, you are the God, you never fail, you never fail, worthy of all our praise, Hosanna to Jesus. We welcome you here, Lord G. Here we go. Hallelujah. Sing to the King. Sing to the King who is coming to reign. Glory to Jesus, the Lamb that was light and salvation. Life and salvation is in power. Joy to the nations where Jesus is King. Come, let us sing. Come, let us sing a song, a song declaring that we belong oh, to Jesus. He's all we need. He's all we need. Yes, yes. Lift up a heart of praise. Sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Sing to the King. For His return. For His return. You went away, but not to say. Ah, He's coming back again. We will be ready. The dawn of the day. We'll sing. We'll join Him. We'll say the Lord is good. The Lord is kind. The Lord is merciful. The Satan is vanquished. That Jesus is King. Come, let us sing a song. A song. He's all we need. He's all we need. Lift up a heart of praise. Sing now with voice of praise. Sing to the King. Sing it again for his returning. For his returning, we watch and we pray. He's coming back again. 
Hallelujah. Coming back again. You went, but not to stay. We'll join in singing. We'll join in singing with all the redeemed. Yes, the Satan is back. But most of all, Jesus is exalted and magnified. Come, let us sing a song, a song, declaring that we belong to Jesus. Oh, Jesus, you are all. King Jesus, we magnify your ancient of days and we sing all hail King Jesus. All hail Emmanuel. Just can we lift our hands as we sing this one, please? The King of Kings, Lord of Shout, can we lift our voice again and say, Oh, King God with us, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, bright morning star. But on the third day you rose for the peace above all, above all powers, above all. Therefore God has given him a name above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man. You will live before Above every kingdom, above every authority Above all kingdoms, above every empire You reign above all wonders The world has ever known Above all wealth, oh God More precious than silver More costly than gold You are no way to measure what you're worth. Crucified, you were crucified. Lay behind the stone, you live to die. Hallelujah! Yes. King of kings, you reign, you reign forever. You reign forever, Elohim. Riva Paso Shitanabaha, you took the fall. Me. One more time, please. Above you were crucified, crucified, laid behind the stone. You live to die, 
dejected and rose like a rose, trampled on the ground. You took the fall. Hallelujah. And thought of me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, he's still thinking of you tonight. Hallelujah. You know, you might be someone here and you're struggling. You're struggling in your faith. You're struggling in your mental health. You might be struggling in your finances and your health. You know, just wonder as we continue to worship for one more song. If you need prayer, just come on forward. We're going to anoint you with oil. We're going to pray that God will meet you at the point of need today. If you need a touch from the Lord. So just feel free to come forward as we worship the Lord. One last song. God bless you tonight. He does care for you. The Bible says, cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. Hallelujah. Whoever you are tonight, if you're struggling, give that burden to the Lord tonight. And we're here to pray with you. You don't need to come up if you don't want to, but if you want prayer, we're going to pray with you and God will touch you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Above all powers, above all And all the ways Jesus Above every circumstance and every situation, oh God Above all kingdoms Above all Above all wonders Of the world Like a rose trampled on the ground, you took the fall and thought of me above all. Like a rose trampled on, hallelujah, you took the fall. Rose again above all and throughout eternity I'll sing your praise. Thank you, my Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Andy. Praise God. Good evening, everybody. We're going to just take, before we take our seats, maybe greet one or two people. I think we can sort of venture a little bit more than we have been doing for the last three and a half years and invite, welcome someone to church. If you're new for the first time, anyone here for the first time, give me a wave if you're here for the first, are you here for the first time? God bless you. Let's turn around, everybody. See this couple standing here at the back. Give them a clap here tonight. And welcome them here. You're so welcome. Good to see you. God bless you. Good to have you here tonight. And, uh, and uh, Frank, I see you at the back there, Frank Heafy. As we said beforehand, we are all very envious that you're going away for four hard, difficult weeks onto the mission field of South Africa and the beaches. But our hearts with your brother. You've been a tremendous deacon. You are a tremendous deacon in this church and a worker for the Lord. And may you have a wonderful breakaway. Again, every one of you are welcome tonight. So great to see you on Wednesday night. And the Lord bless you and strengthen you in your faith. I got a few announcements before we do. If you need an envelope for your tithes and offerings, put your hand good and high. And uh, we'll get some Shane is here and, and Noreen are here. They're going to serve you tonight. So put your hand good and high to honor the Lord with your tithes and offerings tonight. And they will help you with that. And I got some announcements just to keep us moving forward. 
the right way. So obviously tomorrow we have Feed Cork again here at, as a 10 o'clock I think it is. But you know it's online. Feed Cork is here. We're feeding a lot of people at the moment. There's a lot of need in our community. I'll give you a praise report actually. My mom, I was chatting to my mom today. She was telling me she led a man to Christ today at Feed Cork. And uh, this man is in his 50s and he's, she said he's a, he was a real tough sort of a guy. Real hard man, she said, you know, and a lot of history there. But she said, I looked at him across the table in the eye. And she said, if you're going to do this now, it's no taking it back. You're giving your life to God now. You don't take it back the minute you walk out the door. You, he belong, you belong to him. Do you understand that? He said, I understand that. And she led him to the Lord, uh, you know, in our cafe to there. And, you know, whoever that man, you might be watching, you might be here. I don't know. But welcome to the worldwide body of Jesus. Because if you pray that prayer sincerely, God met you sincerely. And the Holy Spirit is living in you. And now you have to grow in your faith. You have to water the seed that's gone in there. And you have to grow. And you will if you come to church and sit under the word and read your Bible and get Christian fellowship. So another soul was one today at Free Cork. And many mouths were fed as well. I don't know. Do we have a count, Catherine, roughly today? Just under 60 people through the doors today. Praise God. Isn't that awesome as well? And a great congratulations to the Feed Cork staff to help our, our, our city, our people. Amen. And Jesus said, feed the, the hungry and clothe the naked. And we thank God we're actively doing that at Cork Church. So some good prayer supports there. Um, uh, also, so Thursday we have lunchtime prayer with Andy. Please get on. Bring your prayer requests in. It's a very faithful prayer meeting, very real prayer meeting. And you can, it's very engaging as well. So we'd like you to join that online on our Facebook Prayer Life Facebook page. And then Thursday night, Portuguese services here, 7 o'clock. Pastor John Ramos and the team will be here, and there's lots of refreshments. So if you're a Portuguese speaker, or you have friends who are, or if you're an English speaker, you want to kind of get an idea of what it's like, you're invited along as well. So there's no age limit there. They'd love to see you in. It's an open service, and a great, great, great quality service. Great ministry goes on on Thursday night. Friday night, we've got our youth going on here. We've got children's ministry as well. You, you kind of know about that, the general church. It's all on our Facebook page as well, or on our website, Cork Church website page, Cork Church Facebook page. All the ministries are there, but Friday night's kids' night. And again, great teams are there. Um, we have, of course, on Sunday, then we have our main service here it's at, at 11, 10.30, pre-service prayer. I'm delighted to hear reports that that's growing. And it's not just growing in numbers, it's growing in conviction. People are beginning to pray the stars out of the heavens, amen. And they're beginning to pray the blessing of God because we sense it here when we're coming into worship and minister, the prayer and intercession of these men and women is breaking something and breaking into the hardness of hearts. And the Holy Spirit is getting a greater liberty to move. So I want to encourage you, if you say I'm not part of a ministry, just come in and start praying, even for a half an hour with these men and women and learn how to pray and learn how to intercede behind the scenes. And God will honor you for that and bless you for that. So that's at 10.30. Uh, young adults then is at Sunday, after, Sunday evening here at 7 o'clock. So we welcome that. again. All those details are online. Fantastic service, actually. I think there's 60 to 70 young uh, men and women coming in, and God is really touching them. There's a, there's a, I'm hoping to see an army rise up, but these young men and women filled with the Holy Ghost, going into the colleges and the workplaces, and coming out of the closets. Amen. Amen. Everything else is coming out of the closet. It would be nice to see the Christians come out. Would you say, do I hear an amen? Every trash is coming out of the closet these days. It's good for some Christians to start coming out of the closet and say, Hey, I'm a Christian, okay? Let's see what they say then, amen. Amen. I won't you wish that we would come out of the closet. Uh, well, Jesus said it differently. He talked about coming out from underneath the bushel, didn't he? So, so let your light shine. And I believe God is putting conviction upon a lot of these young men and women. Great report that in our church today, we've got young men and women that are solid and apologetics, unashamed of the gospel, would preach the gospel at the drop of a hat, and they're not a one bit embarrassed about it. Amen. So I just love that. And, and it's going to become infectious in the workplace, and God is going to use it for his glory. Men and women are going to get saved. Amen. I'm a Christian, and I'm, I'm proud of it. Amen. Praise God. That's good pride to have to be a Christian. So bless the Lord Jesus tonight and uh, thank God for what he's doing in our church. Monday night prayer meeting is on Zoom. We're keeping it there for a while longer. It's really working well. Even if you don't like praying online, and this has kind of bothered me a little bit. Many of you can get online. It doesn't bother me. It should bother you if you're not praying. But honestly, try and make some friends. Connect online and learn how to pray with Christians, not just here in Cork Church, but around the world on our online prayer meeting on Zoom at 7 o'clock on a Monday night. I just want you to come in. It'll take a few weeks for you to get used to the format, but after a while, you'll start to pray with us, 
and we pray through issues and we just bring our prayers before the Lord. We're not relying upon our emotions. We're on the integrity of the prayer and that God hears it. So we're inviting you to be part of that prayer meeting as well. Uh, our offices are Tuesdays to Fridays, 10 o'clock onwards to 4, and then Fee Cork is here, Tuesdays, uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays, back here Wednesday again for 7.15 service. That's kind of the announcements. If you need pastoral care, always call the office. Again, I'm always putting this out to people. Some big traumas in people's lives. People are going through a lot of stuff, and you can't sort that out in the five minutes after a service on a Sunday morning. Some of those issues deserve prayer. They deserve contemplation and to think and to wait and to hear a word from the Lord for you. So come in if you need counseling. Read, ring up and make an appointment to see one of the ministers. There's always going to be someone here to help you. Again, if you're part of the core church congregation and you're experiencing food poverty as a result of your rents going so high or maybe your incomes have dropped dramatically, Feed Cork is here for you as well. You don't need to be hungry, at least when you come to this church. Amen. So we want you to know that. The Bible says do good to all men but particularly to the household of faith. So we want to make sure that our people understand there's food in the house at every level. There's bread in the house of God for you too. Amen. I think I didn't do too bad. Did I miss any announcements? Did I do okay with those announcements? Hmm? Oh, the tithes and offerings. Yeah, well done, Andy. Jeez. Praise God. Can you come forward? We're going to pray for the tithes and offerings. As you come forward, uh, I do have an announcement. There'll be video announcements going out during the week. Uh, next Wednesday, we are starting part one on what works for marriage. And again, watch the, the Facebook and the different clips that are going on YouTube and stuff like that. But um, if you're married, uh, you hope to be married one day, you're gonna glean so much from this. Uh, Dr. Neil Rhodes and Nodine have been involved in marriage ministries for 25 years. I think it was senior pastors at Times Square Church and now church planters uh, are ministering in, in Geneva. They'll have a lot to help you with in every aspect of marriage. So it's going to be very, it's going to be very practical. It's not going to be kind of skirting around issues. It's going to be things that they've learned. And I think that's always good to kind of find people that have made mistakes, find people that have journeyed, people understand the pressures of life, finances, rearing children, issues between personalities in a marriage, things like that. The reason we do this here at the church is because we're shepherds. We want our church to be living in victory, and we want to give you the tools that you need to get through some difficult times. So that's going to be happening next Wednesday, part one, and the Friday then. After that, it's going to be part two here at Cork Church. So we want you to understand and be part of that. Maybe scratch your diary, make sure you got the dates cleared. And then on the Sunday, and again, all this is going online, this is very important as well. This Cork Church, the foundation of Cork Church doctrinally, its soteriology, its understanding of salvation is based upon the new covenant. And so we really encourage you to get into part one and part two, Sunday morning, Sunday evening at 6 o'clock, 6.30, I think. But I might be corrected with the times, but thereabouts, mark off your Sunday evening, 6, 6.30, whatever it is. But part one and part two on the new covenant. Pastor Neil will be teaching from a large whiteboard here. It's a great time for you young men and women to take in a, a notebook and pen and just write down scriptures, write down references, work through what this is about and get a good grasp of what the Bible teaches on the doctrine of salvation. Very, very important because if you have a wrong view of salvation, it's going to throw your view on an awful lot of, of the Bible. So you have to have that grounding, right? So we're invite, inviting you to let you know a couple of pastors have already rang me about coming down because they heard about it. They want to sit under that. So this pastor's traveling down from the, up the country, just out of the blue, Rami, when's he coming in? When's this happening? Count us in. So praise God. Um, we just really want to recommend it to all of you. Amen. Bow your heads with me and we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for this Wednesday night, Lord. Thank you for these wonderful brothers and sisters that are here to worship you, Lord. And uh, Lord, we just thank you that you're building your church. And, and Lord, not just here at Cork, but Lord, Lord, the gates of hell is not stopping it anywhere. Lord, you are advancing your kingdom. You are bringing men and women. We give you glory for this man that got saved today that we know about, Lord. And we pray, Lord, wherever he is, your hand of protection will be over him. You will protect his mind. You will protect his spirit, Lord. But, Lord, these tithes and offerings, we give freely. We give them out of honor to you. We give them in faith. We ask you that you will multiply them for the glory of your name. And we thank you indeed for the many blessings that you've poured into our own lives, God. And you're a good God. Now help us to be generous, Lord, and good to you. We pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys. You can take up the offering. Great to have Pastor Pat. Uh, he's, he's, he came to me in the office beforehand. He hates when I tell the secrets, but he said, he said I'm a little bit convoluted. He said, I've got two words tonight. I said, well, you're only preaching one of them. I said, it's Wednesday night, you know. So it, his heart was so full. He was, and that comes from a man that, get, you know, when you're, when you're a preacher, 
you're always wanting to bring what you feel God is saying rather than just going through a teaching. You know what I mean? And it's not wrong with going through a teaching. I'm trying to remind myself of that. That's healthy too. But men that have a, a sense of concern for the diet and for the direction of churches never take the pulpit lightly. And he, this man never takes it lightly either. So let's give him a really warm welcome as he brings us around the world of the Lord tonight. Thank you, Pat. God bless you. Yeah, I'm going to have to stick to one tonight. Is that okay if I just do one? No, it's not. You want me to do two? I'll just do one. <laughs> no, 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 one's fine, one's fine. Good. Hallelujah. Yeah, one is more than enough. Um, good evening, church. Amen. Yeah, let's, let's have a conversation. How are you tonight? Are you well? Are you blessed in the Lord? You're doing good. God is good all the time. Amen. He's faithful. Can we just skip to the good part? He's good all the time. He's faithful and he's moving. He's working. I'm, it's amazing. I don't know if you've noticed, but we can't go one week to the next without hearing report after report after report of what God is doing, whether it's in Feed Cork or in different parts of the ministry or just being here on a Sunday morning and being in the worship and sensing his presence and sitting under the words, right? It's unbelievable. God is moving. And I want to talk about, um, about moves of God. I want to talk about our time sort of to move. So I've called this message, um, It's Time to Move. Okay, and I want to just talk about moves of God tonight. And I need your prayers. So shall we pray together and we'll open up the words. Lord Jesus Christ. We just thank you tonight, Lord, that we can come around your word. And I thank you, Lord, that you are here in this place. Your presence, Lord, is a greater reality than whatever light, momentary, temporary things we, may be, we might be encountering, Lord. As difficult as it might be, as life can get, we belong to you, and you're bringing us to an expected end. And we thank you, Lord, that you're moving but you want us to be a part of it. We have a part to play in your plan of salvation for this city. And so, Lord, I just pray as I open up the words that you would be made much of, that you would use me in spite of my um, inability, Lord, that you would bring out whatever it is that you want to say, Holy Spirit, that you would have preeminence. Take the wheel, Holy Spirit. Let me be a mouthpiece to simply speak what you would say to your church tonight. So we bless your name, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We're grateful tonight, and we pray that your word would, would just have preeminence in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. So I want to look tonight at the book of Nehemiah. Okay, and I want to look at chapters 1 and chapter 2. Don't worry, uh, we're not going to be going through all of it, but I want to look at two sort of portions of Scripture tonight, and I want to explore this idea of God moving, right? And I want to start by saying this to you, even before I read from the Scriptures, that a move of God is a move of His body, okay? So a move of God is when the church gets mobile, a move of God is when you and me begin to apprehend the reason for which we've been apprehended. We start to say, God's word says it, I believe it, that settles it. The same spirit is in me that was in the apostle Paul. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead is alive in me. I'm going to step out. I'm going to open my mouth. I'm going to be the church, not just attend church. I'm going to be the church wherever I'm planted. That is how God moves, okay? There's no distinction between the head and the body. Sometimes we sit and we sort of pray and we go, God, would you just move in that situation? And God's kind of up in heaven going, well, why don't you go do something? I put my spirit in you. 
You're my, you're, I want to work through you. I want to affect people's lives through your life, through my life in you. You, what, you, you, you can see a need. Go be the answer. Go be my response to the need. Go be my hands and my feet in that situation. We can get a very mystical sort of view of God moving. It, it can be a convenient view because we can be sitting on our sort of spiritual armchairs waiting for God to do something in the lives of our neighbors or in the lives of our community. The word Cork, I don't know if you've noticed, Cork City isn't getting any better. But the light of the gospel is rising in the church, amen, in you and in me. And there is a response to the needs. Look to the person next to you and say, I am the response to the need. Go ahead, like you mean it. And if you, do you know what? If you're not next to anybody, you can sort of just say it to yourself. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. And as you do, I'm going to just, um, oh, thank you very much. I'll drink it all. I'm parched. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, and uh, while I'm having a sip of water, let's turn to Nehemiah chapter 1. Hallelujah. Background on Nehemiah. Nehemiah led the third wave of uh, exiles back from Babylon, back from 70 years of captivity. Uh, the king of Babylon, ne um, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, had rode, rode in in 586 BC. He'd sacked Jerusalem and he'd brought away um, all, most of the inhabitants of Judah away to Babylon for 70 years. And three sets of exiles began to return. Uh, the first, uh, uh, after the 70 years was over, the first was led by Zerubbabel. The second, 60 years later, was led by um, Ezra. And so Zerubbabel rebuilt the temple. Ezra sort of restored the, 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 the law and all that kind of thing. And then uh, Nehemiah uh, built the wall. So if we're ready, let's go to Nehemiah chapter 1, and I'll take a swig. Hallelujah. Nehemiah chapter 1. The words of Nehemiah, the son of uh, um, Hakaliah. Now it happened in the month of Chislev, in the 20th year, as I was in Susa, the citadel, uh, that Hananiah, one of my brothers, came with certain men from Judah. And I asked them concerning the Jews who escaped, who would survive the exile, and concerning Jerusalem. And they had said to me, the remnant there in the province uh, who had survived the exile is in great trouble and shame. The walls of Jerusalem are broken down, and its gates are destroyed by fire. As soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days, and I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Amen. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop there. And I want to read Psalm 110, verse 3. Psalm 110, verse 3 says this. Um, when you go to war, this is a New Living Translation, your people will serve you willingly. In the uh, ESV, it says, your people will offer themselves freely in the day of your power. Now, folks, um, there's uh, two words for time in the New Testament. One is kairos, and it, uh, one is chronos, and it just suggests time, normal time, days, weeks, months, years. But there's a word uh, as well, it's called kairos, and it means, it uh, sort of means uh, the moment when God decides to move or the moment when God decides to act. So there are moments in time, in the time of God, in the plan of God, in the purposes of God, where he says, I'm going to move here. I'm going to act on this situation. I'm going to manifest my power, and I'm going to bring a deliverance. I'm going to bring salvation to a people at a particular time, okay? So that's what it is. So I want you to see this moment in Nehemiah's life as a kairos moment, a time where God is on the move. And remember what I said, when God moves, he moves through his body. Amen? So if God's going to do something, if God's going to affect a certain people a certain way, he's going to do it through you and he's going to do it through me. And I want to look at this here because there is a willingness, according to David here, that we can expect 
and the day when God goes to war for the glory of his name, when he goes to war for the sake of salvation, when he goes and rides out with all of his power and might to affect and touch lives, there's going to be a willingness in you and in me. Um, remember the uh, um, uh, William Booth, I don't know if you remember him, I doubt you remember him, <laughs> but he, was the, he, he, um, he uh, was the founder of the Salvation Army. William Booth said this, I'm not waiting for a move of God, I am a move of God. I'm not waiting for a move of God, I am a move of God. We are a move of God. I, I just pray that this sort of sinks uh, into all of our hearts, to mine as well. God, God is a God of restoration. He's a God of mercy and peace, and he's a God who will rise up to move for the sake of those people who need his touch, okay? So we, as his people, need to begin to seize his vision for others, for restoration. We need to activate our faith, and, and we need to make our move, amen? That's what we need to do. And in the day that he moves, in that kairos moment of time when God rises up through his body, he's promised some things. And I'm going to show you in the book of Nehemiah what they are. The first thing that he promises is that his people, his body will know vision, an unusual sort of kind of vision. We're going to know vision in a different way. We're going to see needs in a different way. Uh, another way of putting it is that we're going to know his heart. And the day he moves, we're going to know the things that move his heart. We're going to know his heart. And the second thing we, his body, will know is favor. Unusual, unusual favor, okay? So we're going to know his heart, but, and, but we're also going to know favor, and that's his hand. So we're going to know his heart in the day of his power, and we're going to know his hand. And that hand is a hand of protection, and it's a hand of favor, so when God decides to move through his body, you will know his heart, his burdens, the things that move him, and you will know his favor. You'll know his protection. In other words, you will have what you need to meet the need for the glory of his name. Amen. Listen, we can be sitting here looking at the news reports, looking at the deluge, the floods of darkness and depression, heartbreak, the horrible things that are touching the people around us, and we can feel powerless. God, how is it going to happen? How are you going to move? How are things going to change? And God is saying to us, when I move, it will be through you. You will know my heart. You'll know my vision for that person, for those people, and you will know my hand. You'll have everything that you need to abound in the work. You'll have everything you need to do whatever it is I've called you to do. That's good news, isn't it? It's good news. Thank you, Lord. And it's all for the sake of restoration. It's all to build the walls of salvation back up. So first, I want to look at this idea of unusual vision or burdens. I want to look at this idea of what it is to really know his heart, okay? So what do I mean by unusual burdens? I mean burdens that are beyond you. I mean things that are beyond your life, beyond your comfort, beyond your experiences, okay? I want to ask you a question here. When you look at first Nehemiah 1, 3, it says that a report came to Nehemiah. It says that um, he was told that the remnant that had survived the exile are in great trouble and shame, and that the walls of Jerusalem are broken down and its gates are destroyed by fire. And the Bible says Nehemiah's heart was broken his, he, uh, as soon as he heard the words, he sat down and wept and mourned for days. So Nehemiah's response to that message was weeping and mourning. It was a deep, deeply affecting thing, okay? But I want to ask, and, and, and I'm going to be honest, sometimes, you know, I'm going to ask anyway, what is the temperature of your heart when you hear the reports of brokenness destruction and desolation around you. Sometimes, and I'll be honest, we can be indifferent. We can. We can be indifferent. 
we don't tend to be moved by things that don't directly affect us. I've heard it said this way, that sometimes our world only stretches to the length of our nose. It's true. It doesn't make us, it's just reality. We can be consumed with our own lives, with our own difficulties, the things that we're working through, whether it's raising kids, whether it's houses or jobs or, or whatever it might be. Sometimes we've got enough on our plate just dealing with our own lots. It can be like that. But there was a, a moment here, in, in a moment like this, when God decides to move, when the report came to Nehemiah about the walls of the city, right? And th these are walls that he'd never seen. These are, this is a place he'd never been, 900 miles away from, from, from him in Susa, in, in the Persian, in the heart of the Persian Empire. His heart broke. His heart broke. Something moved in him. Something affected him about this report. Something uh, about the plight of the people. He didn't know them, but he recognized that they were his people. And listen, you may not know the people in this city, but they, were, they are God's image bearers. They were made in his image, right? Like you and like me. And there's a kinship that can enter into our hearts. We can, we, there's a, a moving uh, in our hearts toward people where we look at them and see them as image bearers, where we see them as kin, if you like. Paul had an anguish of heart as well. I'm going to read here from Romans 9, verse 3 to 4. Paul had an anguish of heart to the point of being willing to cut off uh, to be cut off for the sake of his people, the Jews too. So Paul knew what this was, and it's here in Romans 9, verse 3 to 4. I speak the truth in Christ, I am not lying, as confirmed by my conscience in the Holy Spirit. I have deep sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my own flesh and blood, the people of Israel. So there's something that got into Nehemiah's heart. There's something that got into Paul's heart. And if it's not in your heart, well, if God's going to use you, it will be. In the day of his power, there will be something in your heart for the people around you that doesn't come from within you. It's not in you. It's not in us to be concerned beyond the borders of our own lives. But in the day he decides to move, it will be in you by grace. That's the promise. I'm going to make you concerned. I'm going to make you aware. I'm going to burden you with the things that burden me. I'm going to burden you with the things that bother me. I'm going to, I'm going to open your eyes to the things that I see, to the things that affect my heart, because I want to move through your life. I want to move through your life. And you can be, I've been there. Why me, Lord? Why, I mean, like, I've got nothing to offer. I've got no resources. I've got no ability. I'm busy. I'm, I'm this, I'm that, and the other. But, but in that moment, when God rises up in his church, it's going to not be, it's not going to be, why me? It's going to be, why not me? Well, Lord, why not me? Why not me? Just like Nehemiah. I'm 900 miles away. I've never met these people. I'm, I'm working as a cupbearer to a king. I've got no resources, no ability, but why not me? God, you've put, you've put a burden in my heart. Why not me? And Nehemiah took their cause on himself. He took their cause as his own. He bore their burden, folks. Listen, this is the heart of God outworking through his body. Do you see what I'm saying? This is how God works out his heart through his body. Because Jesus took on our cause. Jesus looked on us from glory. He looked on our hapless estate. We were far, we were distant. He had everything he needed, shrouded in glory. In John 17, he talks about the glory he had before the world was created. Jesus was sufficient. Jesus had everything, yet he looked to us, to you and to me. He saw our need and he said, I'm going. I'm taking that burden, the burden of their sin, their failure, their shame, and I'm going to move. 
I'm going to rend the heavens and I'm going to come down. There is something of the compassion of God that we see in our Savior, that we will see in ourselves the day God rises up for his testimony in this city. I said God is going to rise up for the sake of his name in this city. He will not let Cork City go to rack and ruin. Not while there's a church. Not while he's indwelling people through his spirit. Not while he's filled vessels with his glory. He's not going to let it go down to the depths of hell. He's not going to let suicidality win the day. He's not going to let domestic violence win the day. He's not going to let drug addiction win the day. He's not going to let these things win the day. He's planted a church. He's planted a witness. He's planted a testimony. He's planted himself in you. Emmanuel, God with us. We, this, this is, this is the time. This is what I'm trying to say as ineloquently as I might be trying to say it. This is the time. He's moving and he wants to move through you in greater measure. He took their cause on himself. Jesus bore our burden. He came to our broken walls seeking to rebuild. Jesus was cut off. Like Paul. Like Paul said it. Oh, that I would be cut off, that they might be brought in. Our Savior was cut off, so we might be brought in. This is the heart of God, folks, to carry our cross, to carry our crosses, our burdens, and it's playing out through Nehemiah, through this story, and the promise is that in in, in the moment he moves, it'll play out through us. God's heart, his concern is for the walls of salvation. Listen to Isaiah 60, verse 18. Verse 17 and 18. God says this, instead of bronze, I'll bring gold. And instead of iron, I'll bring silver. Instead of wood, bronze instead of stones iron i will make your overseers peace and your taskmasters righteousness violence shall no more be heard in your land devastation or destruction within your borders and listen folks you shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise this is the heart of god i'm going to take bronze and i'm going to give you gold I'm going, to take what's, I'm going to take what's of this world, of this age, what's passing away, and I'm going to give you something of heaven. I'm going to give you something eternal. I'm going to restore. That's his promise to, to his people, but also that's his ministry through his people to the lost. I'm going to restore. I'm going to, re, I'm going to rebuild, and I'm going to use my people, and the walls will be called salvation. Because God has decreed an end to this sort of violence and ruin and destruction in the lives of people. And he's ordained that his church would be the answer. 1 John 3, 8, the Bible says he appeared, Jesus appeared to destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. And he has appeared through his church. And when you stand there for people, when you stand there, when you stand and uh, as his body, as his hands and his feet, he appears in you. There's a witness of Christ in you when you are that for people. We love and have loved the ministry of David Wilkerson in this church. He's a personal friend to Pastor Nick, to Pastor Hamp. And um, we are just so happy to continue on in the relationship with Times Square Church. Summit, Pastor Carter, Pastor Teresa. But most of us know the story. We've read The Cross and the Switchblade. Maybe you've seen the movie. God loves Nikki to you. See the movie? No, with Pat Boone? No? Eric Estrada? You're missing out. Make sure you watch that, right? But we know the story. David Wilkerson seeing news reports of gangs in New York. He took a pulpit, David Wilkerson, in Phillipsburg in central Pennsylvania. Okay? Far away, I've been in Pennsylvania, I've been in New York, hours away. 
But in 1958, he read in Life magazine about a group of teenagers, members of the Egyptian Dragons Gang, then on trial in New York for murder. And later he said in, the, in interviews that the article impelled him to go to New York and help these gang members. Just a preacher, just a preacher from another state, reading a Life magazine article that thousands, tens, hundreds of thousands must have also read. But it was a Kairos moment in time. It was an ordained moment in time. And God put a burden in that man's life for, for those gangs in New York. And this skinny white preacher went to New York and met a man called Nicky Cruz. And we know the story. I believe Nicky Cruz has spoken to more people live than even Billy Graham did because it was a Kairos moment in time. Just, just out of that moment, that act, out of that burden, God birthed World Challenge, Times Square Church, and many other ministries and ministers into the kingdom of God. Do not underestimate what it is to have God burden you with his heart. Don't underestimate. Let's rise up. This is my burden. Those needs, this is my burden. This is my calling. I am called to the needs of others. I'm not called to personal glory. My calling isn't to a stage. It's to a gutter, to be his hands and feet to the broken. That's where I'm called. I'm called to where the need is, to be his hands and feet, to lift them up. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. This is his heart. Psalm 40 verse 2. One and two, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. Hallelujah. He drew me up from the pit of destruction, from the miry bog, and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. The Jesus who came to me in the pit of destruction, in the gutter of my own sin and failure, and who got down into the miry clay. And listen, if you've ever worked with clay, it gets everywhere. Amen? So God came down into the clay to lift me up. And there's a struggle to lift anything out of clay, folks. And some of you know how you struggled with that, with, with Jesus, with that call to salvation. You know what it is. You know that struggle, that call when his love called you close and you resisted, but he had his way. Hallelujah. And he put your feet on a rock. He established you on a secure path and put a song in your mouth. And at the end of that psalm, of that reading, there's a promise that that work of salvation will cause many to put their trust in the Lord. Many will put their trust in the Lord. Many, many. That is the promise. You will be fruitful. Your salvation will bring about a harvest in due time. He will use you to affect many with the same gospel that affected you. Many, that has received that for your life. If you feel like you're fruitless, if you feel full of fear, if you can't find anything in yourself to rise to the needs around you, he will come at the opportune time. You will have everything you need and you will be fruitful in Jesus' name. What a call. What a call. And in truth, at a certain point, we recognize the depth of the problem and the shallowness of our ability, don't we? We're brought back to it. The depth of our blessing and comfort and the utter exposure of those around us to the effects of sin. But that's all right. That is all in the plan. Because like Nehemiah, it's to push us into prayer. It's to push us with that burden into prayer. God wants to burden you. Open your eyes to your own inability and need for him. And then bring you into the place of prayer. God burdens you so you can unburden him in prayer because it's through divine power that these things come to pass. Not by might, not by spirit, but not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Amen. Don't forget. Now listen, when brokenness, when the brokenness around you breaks you, God burdens you 
so you can unburden it in his presence. When you are truly moved for people, it moves you into the presence of God. It's more than just talk, isn't it? That's, isn't it funny? Someone gives a bit of bad news or a bad report, and we, we, we oh, oh, it's awful, but we're all looking for a way to get the conversation back onto something a little bit less intense, a little bit less awkward. Oh, that's terrible, and, and we'll, we'll, you, know, you give it your, the customary six seconds, and then you crack a joke or bring something else up, and you get as far away as possible from the, from, from the topic. Well, the promise here is that there will be a time where you are burdened into the place of prayer. I'm not let that. I can't shake it, Lord. I can't shake the vision you've given me for those people. And I'm bringing it to you because you're the only one who can bring it about through my life. Lord, I may not have resources. I may not have influence with earth, earthly authority, but I have the ear of the King of Kings. I have the ear of the King of Kings. And the first thing I'm going to do with this burden is give it back to God. And I'm going to have a look at Nehemiah's prayer here. Nehemiah prays, and it's an intercessory prayer, and it's one of um, a few that I can think of in the Scriptures. Another would be Daniel's intercessory prayer in Daniel chapter 9, and we're going to touch on that too, but I want to give you a couple of points, a couple of uh, elements to Nehemiah's prayer that maybe you can use in your own prayers as you pray over needs, as God burdens you with them. What do you think? Let's do it. Have a look here. I'm going to read it out. I'm going to read the prayer, and then I'm going to go back through it. So have a look here. Verse 5 uh, of, of, of Nehemiah 1. And I said, O Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments, let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant that I now pray before you day and night for the people of Israel, your servants, confessing the sins of the people of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Even I and my father's house have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes and the rules that you commanded your servant Moses. Remember the words that you commanded your servant Moses saying, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the peoples. But if you do return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though your outcasts are in the uttermost parts of heaven, from there I will gather them and bring them to the place I have chosen to make my name dwell there. They are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed with your great power and by your strong hand. O oh Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight to fear your name and give success to your servant today and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. No, I was cupbearer to the king. Let's walk through that prayer because there are elements to it that we can carry into our own prayer closet as we pray through needs. Number one, Nehemiah in verse five, he prays the word. Okay, he prays the word, and I'm going to show you what I mean by that. He makes three, he prays three things, recognizes in his prayer three things about God. He recognizes that God is the God of all power, and that he's a, he's a promise keeper, a covenant keeper, and that he's the God of all faithfulness. And folks, when we get into that place of prayer, we need to remember, we need to extol and lift up the reality of God is, because of, of who God is, because if we don't, we will have, our needs will be bigger than our God, if that makes sense. God has to be magnified. He has to be magnified. Our eyes have to be on him, who he is. It says in Psalm 62, verse 11, once I have said it, and twice I have heard it, that all power belongs to God, and to you belongs steadfast mercy, steadfast love. So God is the God of all power. There's no power, there's nothing in this world, nothing that is currently causing suffering in the people around us that's too big for God, too powerful for God. We need to refresh ourselves in that place of prayer. He's the God of all power. He's the God of all, he is the God of steadfast mercy. And he's a promise keeper. He's going to be faithful to his word. God, what you said you will do, that you will do. You have called yourself Jehovah. Jehovah means promise keeper. 
It means promise keeper. We speak about faithfulness a lot. We sing about his faithfulness. Amen. God's faithful. But I love that idea of promise keeping. A promise keeping God. What I love about that is this. If I promise you something, the only way you're not going to get it is if I either lie or change my mind. Hebrews chapter 6 tells us that it is impossible for God to do either. So if he said it, if he promised it, he's going to be faithful to his word. For God, saying it and doing it are the same. Remember what he said to Jeremiah? Jeremiah, I'm watching over my word to perform it. I'm watching over my word. Remember Psalm 138 verse 2? God has put his name his word even above his name. What does that mean? It means that God has attached the glory of his name to him fulfilling whatever he's promised. So the day he doesn't do it is the day he's no longer called faithful. The day he's no longer called Jehovah. He's a promise keeper. Hallelujah. So we remind ourselves of that in that place of prayer. In verse 6 and 7, he starts to talk about the reality of, of the failures of the people. This is a real thing, Lord. It's a reality. And so he's coming honest to God in prayer. He's coming honest with a radical honesty for yourself and for, honor, for others. In Daniel chapter 9, Daniel says, Lord, to us belong open shame or shame of face for what we've done. There's a sort of honesty where we own, we own our failure, we own what we're not, but it's only to embrace who he is. God, I failed, this has failed, people have failed, our attempts have failed, but you are merciful. And I thank you, Lord, that you will move according to your character, not mine. You're going to move according to your character, steadfast love, faithfulness, mercy. That's you. That's who you are. You're going to move according to that, God, even in spite of what you see in people. That's encouraging, folks. If you're praying for somebody, if you're trusting God for somebody, and you, all you can see is their failures, maybe all you can see is your failed attempts at changing them or moving them the, the, in a righteous direction, thank God we can own all of that. And God will move, not because of our character, not because of what we can do, but because of his character. He's merciful. He's kind. And so he's going to move by grace, folks. Three, number three, Nehemiah says this in verse eight and nine. He says, remember the word that you commanded to your servant Moses. If you're unfaithful, I will scatter you among the people. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, Though your outcasts are in the utmost parts of heaven, there I will gather them. So in other words, Nehemiah is praying the promises of God. He's pointing God back to his promises. I think it was David Wilkerson who said, you, you, you sue God for his promises. You point, you point to this book, this word, this word, Lord, your word says, move according to your word. Your word says, move according to what you have said in the book, Lord. I'm holding, you have held yourself to the parameters of this book. You have bound yourself to what you have said, and so do it, Lord. Do it, do it, Lord. Be faithful, that's who you are. And four, finally, in verse 11, pray for favorable outcomes. Nehemiah asks, maybe audaciously, some of us, you know, we pray, Lord, if it's your will, if, it's, if you're up for it, Lord, if it's your will. Not Nehemiah. Nehemiah prayed for favorable outcomes. He said, God, just Lord, you, do you know what? Sometimes we don't pray the way that we should. We should come to him. He's our father. He loves us. We should ask with audacity. We should be audacious. I've got a 13-month son. He has got no problem barking out orders, and he doesn't even speak yet. My son will just go, uh, 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 and point with his head if he wants something. And he's not, waiting, he's not writing me a letter in, in Shakespearean English. He's not making an appointment. Uh, he's not even waiting to see if I, um, I'm not busy doing other things. He's approaching, and he's doing it on, on the 
but on the lone ground of the fact that he's my son. And we should be talking to God this way, praying for favorable outcomes. God, move this way. I'm asking you, if you don't do it, I trust you. I love you. You're at work for the good in all things, and I'll make my peace with that. But up until you move, God, I'm praying that you move this way. Move this way. Save this person. Save all those people. Touch all those lives. Bring them in, Lord Jesus. Do it, do it this week. Do it, do, it this, do it today, Lord. You're able. It's nothing for you. A word from heaven. It could happen now. Why should I be bound by, th- by the things I see around me, by my situation? My prayers shouldn't be bound by, by the parameters of my situation. My, my circumstances don't speak for you, Lord. I can, pray in, I can pray audaciously and trust you, Lord. Thank you. Do you know, I think what I want to do is pray now. I have a little bit more. Maybe another time I can talk to you about the reality of, of God's hand and his protection and his favor. Do you know, when we begin to step out, not only does he burden us, but he actually also gives us grace. He gives us favor. He gives us opportunity. He opens doors. He does these things as well. And what time is it, Andy? Plenty. Let's pray. Another day we'll look into it. But I I hope, church, I, I just want to encourage you. I just want to encourage you today. He wants to move in this city. And he wants to move. He will move through you. And you may not have the burden yet but he'll give it to you. You may not have the grace, the provision, the resources yet, but it's coming at the right time in the day he rides out to war, if you like. For the sake of restoration, we will be right there as his body, moving, doing whatever it is he's called us to do for the glory of his name. Jesus, Lord. Come on, lift your hands, church. Lift your hands, church. Let's look, let's, Wait, wait, there is, a, there is a, a so much out there. There is so much need. And we're the answer tonight. The, Christ in us is the hope of glory. Lord Jesus, Jesus, you've given us everything we need for life and for godliness, but also, Lord, that we might affect other lives for your glory. Oh, Jesus, we are, you know that we're but dust. You know, Lord Jesus, that we are limited in our capacity, limited in our vision, limited in our resources. Yet, Lord, you've said that you'll give us your heart in the day of your power, and you'll give us your favor and your, and your grace in the day of your power. And I just pray, Lord God, for those people in this city, Lord, who need a touch. Lord, I pray that you would stir us again to go out and be your hands and your feet. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, for the glory of the gospel. Never let us forget, Lord, you are heaven's Nehemiah, Jesus. You came from heaven to earth to rebuild the walls of salvation. And now you call us to participate in that work, that work, Lord, of building for your name. So, Jesus, we love you. We bless you. We praise your name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, folks. Church, God bless you. Thank you for your patience tonight. Thank you for coming in, braving the elements. And listen, we're going to just keep an eye on social media. Um, We've got a lot going on this week, and it's all good. And just a quick plug, make sure you come to this Neil Rhodes thing. It's going to be fantastic. You're really going to enjoy it. Amen? All right. God bless you.